Some of the fonts that you'll use contain literally thousands of characters. Now, above and beyond all of our letters and digits, there are some special characters and special aesthetics that we can apply to our copy. We have examples here and I've highlighted in red, as you can probably see, all of the special characters and aesthetics that I'm going to take you through. In order to apply these changes, well, I'll need to go to the window menu, down to typing tables and then open up the character panel. And we'll also need to go to type and open up the glyphs panel. So first of all, um, when we have these chemical formulas like CO2, I'm going to double click on my text frame, swipe over the number two in there because that needs to be shown in the proper chemical formula. And that involves us having something applied to it called a subscript. So you go to the character panel flight menu and we're going to use open type options. So these are type aesthetics that have been built into the specific font in question for these specific scenarios. In the list, I'll choose subscript and it drops it down there like so. Likewise, we can take the S and the T from first floor. Again, panel flyout menu, open type, and this time choose superscript. And we get that appearance. So it doesn't just make the characters smaller. They're actually the same weight, the same contrast as the rest of the font. So they're not going to disappear when printed out when they're very, very small. Again, we've got fractions. So if I highlight these three characters, you'll notice that I have in this version of InDesign and for the last few years, we have a glyph alternate and that's just popped up next to my cursor. So if I was to hover over and left click on that, it would apply that type aesthetic for me. InDesign will detect when a series of one or more characters are highlighted and what they can be changed to. There'll also be words such as days of the week or month of the year, AM, PM and abbreviations that could of course be left as sentence case. You could define them as being all caps, but it can also be worth just trying to apply what's called all small caps to words such as these to make them look more typographically pleasing. We have swash characters as well. So when I swipe over this, I can go to my glyphs panel and then choose alternatives for selection. And in here, I can choose to apply these different swash characters. If I choose this one in here, Latin capital of letter S, because it's highlighted, it replaces the selected character when I double left click on it and we get this embellishment. We can also have things called ligatures. So if I swipe over these two here, go to the panel flyout menu, ligatures. So when you have two characters that are going to share very close proximity to one another, rather than crashing into one another, there'll be a specific scenario where those characters are combined together as one glyph character. And just to show you the other alternates in here, if I highlight them all as examples, panel flyout menu, and then ligatures like so. There are some scenarios where you can highlight a couple of characters like the S and the T, and then I can go to the panel flyout menu, open type, and then choose discretionary ligatures. And you get these types of embellishments as well. Some of your more unusual characters, such as trademarks and copyright. Well, if I put my cursor into the text frame and then go and choose instead of entire font, I can choose symbols. And some of these might appear very small. You can go down to the bottom and you can zoom in to make them look bigger. And from here, well, I've got a registration mark in there. I can double click to add that in and it adds it in at the same size and style as the rest of the text in that line. And also if I put my cursor in after the word InDesign, then in here there is a TM for trademark as well. Also, if you have to use a mathematical formulas, don't use just an X from the alphabet. Instead, highlight that character you can refine what you can see to math symbols. And there's a whole array of math symbols that can be used. And a classic example of that is the multiply rather than the X. Also for degrees, if I put my cursor after 360, I can go back to symbols and I can choose here by hovering over it. Sometimes they'll be very similar, but the tooltip will tell you what they are in there. So in this case, degree sign, double left click and it adds it in there. And then rather having the N and O and a period, I can highlight those 
and then I can replace them with a glyph character. Also for measurements, I can add in here the estimated symbol and a space to apply that. So there are numerous things that you can apply typographically to your text that are above and beyond your normal alpha and numerical symbols. And you'll find them in the glyphs panel, or you can change the style of your text from the character panel and from the panel flight menu or the open type menu in there. And those are special characters.